Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight, we've got a quick hit video or a late night insight on one of the most popular mainstream fragrances of the last decade. And I've often said on my channel that I will go everywhere. I'll talk about anything. Uh, I'll talk about $3,500 Rojas. I'll talk about $7 Lomanis. And I'll talk about ultra niche, ultra rare stuff, you know, um, and I'll also talk about the designers. So this is me talking about the designers. To be frank, most um, people that watch my channel are probably past this, but uh, people like these negative reviews. And honestly, I want to put my thoughts out there on as many fragrances as I can. That's my goal of the channel is I want to create a little bit of a library of my two cents on, on these fragrances, and sometimes we're going to come across these. And um, it's been a while since I've done a shite review, so I figured, what the hell, let's do it. This is going to be uh, Versace Eros, which came out in 2012. This is a one mil sample that somebody sent me, uh, and they probably did it just so I could do a shite review, because people tend to like these reviews. Uh, I don't know if I have the vocabulary to bash it enough as it deserves to be bashed. First of all, there's one good thing about this perfume, okay? The uh, best thing about Eros is the name. When Koros, okay, the great Koros from 1981 that Pierre Bourdon did was being created, its actual working name that uh, YSL gave to it was Eros, Okay. And interestingly enough, if you go look at the advertisements for Versace Eros, it is a man holding a giant Versace Eros bottle, which uh, should remind you of Chanel. Chanel did a uh, Antaeus ad, so Koros's direct competition in 1981, interestingly enough, uh, did a ad where the guy is holding the giant Antaeus bottle. So the advertisement's a cheap ripoff. The smell is a cheap, disgusting smell. I'll tell you exactly what this smells like in just a second. Well, maybe not exactly, but I'll, I'll get you in the ballpark, okay? So um, here's the note breakdown for those of you who are interested. And um, see all these vibrant colors? You don't get any of that from this fragrance. This is all marketing. This is all, um, this is all visual marketing to try to make you think you're smelling this. You're not smelling any of this. Uh, so first of all, this is the way I this is the way I perceive Eros in my head. When I smell this, so I've had this one mil sample for I don't know, I don't know how how long I've had this, but I've been kind of staring at it, thinking about doing this, spray it on one or two sprays before nighttime, uh, go to bed, you know, and I'm th my face in the thumbnail is basically the best indicator of how I feel about the scent. Just, you know, almost like defeated. However, this scent may be uh, okay for, uh, you know, a kid who is uh, very young, um, wants to go with the crowd, you know, hasn't discovered that they really love perfume yet. This is not for the fume heads. This is for the, um, you know, junior high kid. That That's what it is. It's for the pre- pubescent junior high kid is the way that I look at this fragrance. Uh, so here's the note listing. Mint, Italian lemon, green apple, Venezuelan tonka bean, ambroxan, geranium, bourbon vanilla, atlas cedar, Virginia cedar, vetiver, and oak moss. And so when I smell this, here's what I get. Imagine if you took every single chemical you could get your hands on, all of it, okay? Anything under the kitchen sink, Windex, 409, Comet, Lysol. You took every single thing and you dumped it into a pail and you stirred it together and you sprayed it on your skin. It is literally probably the most disgusting fragrance I've ever smelled in my life, ever, of all time. There's no redeeming quality. Let me walk you through some of these scents, okay? Um, so, do you get mint? Uh, no. You get some sort of weird chemical thing that maybe gives off this slight minty, 
vibe, but there is nothing even close to a mint in here. So, no. Uh, do you get lemon Italy or purr? No. No, you do not get lemon Italy or purr. Do you get apple? Um, maybe if you took the most synthetic chemical apple of all time, in the first five minutes, maybe you get some sort of apple, but it is literally the worst interpretation of green apple I've ever smelled, ever, of all time. So we'll put a, we'll put a question mark by apple. Maybe there's apple. Do you get tonka bean? Yes. You get a whole bunch of tonka bean. Just what I want, to walk around smelling like a sweet tonka bean, which is exactly what you get from this. So we'll put a check mark on the tonka bean. We'll circle the tonka bean. Tonka gets a circle and a check mark. Uh, do you get ambroxan? Absolutely. A ton of chemical, disgusting ambroxan. Yes, check mark. Geranium flower? Mm, no. Uh, vanilla? Yes. You get a ton of sweet, disgusting vanilla. Do you get uh, oak moss? Absolutely not. None of the oak moss that I know, I'll tell you that. And do you get cedar wood from Virginia and cedar wood from Atlas Cedar? No, no, I don't get any of that. Uh, so basically what you end up smelling like is a ambroxan tonka bean with some of the most chemical vanilla you'll ever smell. Okay, literal. I mean, you're talking... It is... It is um, it is, uh, it, it, it really does boggle the mind that this is still in production and that people wear this. I mean, uh, and here's the thing about this, okay? You don't just smell of Eros, okay? You don't leave some sort of Eros scent trail. You reek of Eros when you wear this. You literally reek. I mean, it is, it is, uh, <laughs> there is, None of these ingredients are what you actually smell. Don't think you're going to smell something that smells like this beautiful, you know, wet, plush, uh, natural mint. Absolutely not. It is, uh, you know, the mint in the opening is uh, just disgusting, synthetic. Uh, maybe your brain will sometimes slightly think maybe you're getting something relatively minty, but it's like, you know... Uh, the, it's like the mint smell that they put in, uh, air freshener or it's that kind of vibe. Okay. Uh, do you get this beautiful citrus in the opening? Absolutely not. No, you do not get the beautiful citrus. It doesn't smell anything like that picture. Okay. It, it, it just, uh, everything about this scent, all of these little pictures that they show you, the beautiful red geranium, you know, the uh, the vanilla, the oak moss, uh, it's bad. I mean, it is, uh, and you know what? You know what uh, hit me while I was making this, while I was kind of coming up with just a couple things to say? Um, the person who made this, okay? Uh, the person who made this, I did a uh, blind testing on my channel recently, and let me grab it. Because if you were following my channel, I did a live stream called Blind Sniffing. One was Saturday night, one was a Friday night, one was a Saturday night. Whichever one came first, when we went through the uh, one through four, there was a blind perfume key that my perfume god person sent to me. And if you'll notice, every time I got to a creation by this perfumer, Aurelien Guichard of Givaudan, I went, Oh, no. No, absolutely not. So when I would smell it, and uh, like the very first one was called Oud 7, and it was the number third. It was the number three blind sniff, okay? Uh, and I still have it right here. Here, I'll, I'll take it out real quick. We'll, we will uh, torture myself a little bit here. So here it is, number three, Oud 7. And when I first sprayed this on, when I, when I first sprayed this on, uh, I said, oh my God, that smells like a Latafa. You know, Latafa is one of the $18 uh, for 100 mil, Oud, Middle Eastern, you know, 
the this kind this kind of house, okay? This is the kind of uh, you know, $18 eternal oud with a cap that looks like a tree and probably every one of these branches breaks off. Um, and I said, man, this smells super cheap and bad. Uh, and you can go watch the live stream. I had no idea who it was, okay? And then once it actually came out that it was Oud 7 and it was this Maitre Premier. Maitre Premier, uh, which is the same house that did Falcon Leather, which I absolutely despise Falcon Leather. Um, and he did this Oud 7 and it is bad. It's terrible. And then later on in the later on in the next video at the very end, the last one, number eight, uh, and I was like, man, this does not smell good at all. To my surprise, it was the same perfumer, the exact same perfumer, this Aurelien Guichard guy of Givaudan. Uh, and this time it was for a different house, though. It wasn't for this Maitre Premier. He was um, he was making something for a new house. Uh, and it was called, the new house was called, um, let's see if I can find it real quick. Here it is. Oud Mystique from 2022. Edeniste is the new house. And it's, you know, him with one other perfumer, him with one other perfumer every time. Uh, and this Oud Mystique I was smelling was like a Herod's exclusive, which you know, it's uh it's it's expensive if it's a Harrods exclusive. And I hated it. I just do not like this guy's style. And you know, um the other thing is is that this is marketed towards men and mostly young men. You're you're making young men walk around smelling like this. I mean, uh they should not be smelling like this. Young men should not be smelling like this. This is uh, this is bad for their psyche. This is probably what's turning all the young men into little bitches, if you ask me. They should be wearing Koros and Antaeus and Bellamy and Polo Green, and that's what they should be wearing, you know. They need someone in their life to give them some positive guidance, in my opinion. Uh, if I walked around smelling like this all day, I'd probably be a little snowflake, too. I mean, my God. What a nightmare. Uh, could you imagine having to wear this all day? Uh, I'm, I'm about to go scrub this off. I mean, it is a chemical mess. A chemical mess. And it is a, um, you know, it, it is really a sign of the times that this is popular. It is, a, it is a true canary in the coal mine that this is what men want to smell like nowadays. Versace Eros for men, uh, is, I mean, I was pretty hard on Blue de Chanel, but this makes Blue de Chanel look like a godsend. Give me Blue de Chanel. Please give me Blue de Chanel. I would wear Blue de Chanel over this, uh, all day, every day, and twice on Sunday. It is that bad. Uh, it is a disgrace to the Versace name, if you ask me, because Versace has some good scents. Uh, like, for example, this is one nobody talks about, but I absolutely love this. This is my favorite Versace. It's called Versus. You boys and girls, if I if you are getting triggered by this video, okay, if what I'm saying is hurting your feelings, go on the internet and try to source yourself a bottle of Versus for men, the blue one for, you know, they had a red one for women and a blue one for men back then. This is so good. I mean, this is this is the best masculine that Gianni that Gianni Versace put out, in my opinion. Um, and no one talks about this. Nobody. Um, forget the powder puff blue. Go for the real blue. Go for the go for the. Uh, this is this is good juice. I love this stuff. I'm a huge fan. Uh, they obviously do have some other fragrances that are not terrible. Um, they have... They've got the original Versace Man, which is discontinued, but this is a great fragrance, okay? 
So if you're a Versace fanboy, you could go for the original Versace Loam from the 80s, which is actually not my favorite for a, you know, vintage fragrance guy like me, but I do have a new bottle. So I would love to know what a vintage smells like one day, but even the new bottle I hear is pretty good. And then of course, everyone knows the uh, Versace Oud Noir, Pour Homme Oud Noir, whatever it is. And that's not bad. Uh, I have to give it to them. For an Oud, they did an okay job there. So, you know, Versace is a proud house for the most part. Um, you know, these are, these are kind of my favorite, these two. And so to see them have to, you know, dip down to do something like this. Um, how do people wear this? Could you imagine wearing this all day? I mean, um, the, the inside of your nose by the end of the day would be completely ripped out. You would not be able to smell a single thing after a full day of wearing Versace Eros, in my opinion. Um... Now, they do have a flanker that I wanted that I wanted to talk about, but not today. Versace Eros Flame. So, uh, they did release a flanker, and it is a different perfumer. So, I'm very interested in, um, you know, talking about that Eros Flame on the channel one day. But, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd get on for a couple minutes and vent. Uh, I did a uh, Chanel video today, which, you know, was taxing and time-consuming. Uh, and so I figured I would just knock one of the decants, one of the samples out that's been just staring at me for months. Oh, God. <laughs> if you guys know Versace Eros, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you love Eros. Hey, I mean, fragrances are like picking a favorite color, okay? So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's... Uh, it's like uh, if you're going to go to work and I'm going to wear a navy suit and the other guy's going to wear a black suit and the other white guy's going to wear a, a gray suit. If you want to wear a rainbow suit, you go right ahead. You know, every to each their own, right? Uh, it really is like picking a favorite color. If you want to wear a green, lime green suit to work, you go right ahead. But this is, uh, um, this is not a good fragrance, uh, subjectively and objectively. Subjectively, I hate it. I think objectively you could break it down and give many reasons why this is just not a very good fragrance, uh, especially compared to what else is out there, especially since Versace's are not cheap. I don't know how much this goes for, but I would assume it's not cheap. I mean, hell, I'd rather buy three or four Latafas for that price. You know, I mean, it's it's that bad. Uh, I mean, hell, I wore this to bed last night just to test it out, and it was way better. This was way better than Versace Eros. And this is like, you know, they gave me this for free. They didn't even want it. They were like, here, just take this 20 mil sample. Um, so, I mean, Eros is, uh, it, it, it is that bad. Uh, it is uh, hopefully on its way out, although I'm not holding my breath because Versace really doesn't have anything to replace it with. But uh, this is supposedly a clubbing scent, this minty, you know, bubble gummy thing. Uh, apparently is a clubbing scent. I, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, you know, when I smell this, I really, you know, get this reeking vibe. Like, it reeks. That's the word that comes to mind. That's why I say you don't smell like Eros. You reek of Eros when you wear this. And, I mean, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine walking into a serious meeting or, you know, going on, like, a serious date and smelling like this. I would almost be embarrassed. Like, I would have to excuse myself. I'd have to come up with some excuse to leave. Uh, it's it's that bad. So, um, but then again, it is also about, I guess, where you are in your journey. I've sniffed thousands of fragrances. And so if you are new and this is all you know, uh, it's probably an easy thing to pick up and spray because it's very sweet. It's extremely sweet, disgustingly sweet. Uh, and I always think masculine fragrances should not be sweet, um, because sweet kind of comes across as very juvenile. Even when I was 15 years old, I didn't want to act juvenile. You know, when you're 15, you want to, you think you're an adult. You want to be grown. You want to, you know, you want to do stuff that grown people do. You want to drive and drink and hang out, all the stuff you wanted to do when you were a teenager, right? Um, you know, it's... It, so 
I don't want to hear, well, you know, there, there should be some sweet fragrances targeted towards the younger kids, too. That's fine. But um, at least give them something better than this. You know, they deserve better than this. This is bad. This is bad, for, per, bad perfume, in my opinion. Um, I don't have the vocabulary to bash that anymore. I just, I wanted to get this review out of the way so I could put this in the talked about it file. Uh, but I would love to hear what you guys think about it. Um, if you've smelled it, you know, most people on who watch this channel probably just ignore it, but, um, but yes, like I said, my, um, my path of reviewing or talking about as many perfumes on the channel as I can, uh, one more out, one more, you know, mainstream fragrance out of the way. I do have a very rare and discontinued fragrance that I'm going to talk about tomorrow on the channel so uh, stay tuned that'll be a good one that'll be an early impression and I think that's one where you know if you can find a bottle it'll be worth grabbing I'm still looking for a bottle but I've got a mini so uh, I'll, I have enough juice to talk about it on the channel tomorrow all right guys thanks for watching everyone cheers and see you again tomorrow bye now